Hi everyone! Welcome to episode 22 of Anne Yodinitz podcast. This is a knitting podcast all about knitting, um, sometimes a bit of uh, dyeing yarn. I am a knitter based in Finland. I also have my own designs and this is where I share, this podcast is where I share everything um, knitting related. Welcome back if you have been here before. I truly appreciate your um, time and I'm really happy that you want to spend your time with me. And if you are here for the first time, welcome. Um, I hope you enjoy. I have a lot to show today. Um, I'm hoping my voice will uh, carry through. <laughs> so um, we'll see how long this will be. But I do have a lot to show. It's been three weeks since I filmed. And so I have a lot to share with you today. Welcome. You can find me on Instagram as Anne Jutinitz. That's where I'm the most active. So if you have something you want to talk to me about, just send me a message over there and I will happily respond uh, to you. Okay, so uh, today's business. I do have five finished objects uh, for you today. And first of all, I want to say that I have been a little bit sick over the the last week and you can still hear my my voice is not 100%. I do apologize if that's annoying to you, but I'm fine now. Um I had to, you know, do a little um hairdo because I want uh you know, I've been home all week um laying on the couch being um having a little bit fever and you know, I've been blowing my nose constantly, so I wanted to feel like a human being again. So that's why the curls. And um, yeah, let's get into it. Um, so like I said, five finished objects. Um, mostly they are small ones. And these were already uh, well on their way last time. So I made these strappy socks. And these are made uh, in leftovers and mini skeins. Um, actually, all of the other colors are mini skeins except for the toe. Uh, this is something that I dyed myself last summer and I um, knitted into a shawl for my mother-in-law and the leftovers are here. And I did not have much left. I think I had like a half a meter of yarn left so it was yarn well spent and the rest are from my advent calendar and yeah these are uh for my friend and they are made um with 2.25 millimeter so us one uh needles and i do magic with my socks and 68 stitches because I'm a tight knitter and they are um, European size 40, 41. And yeah, there is a heel flap and gusset, the French turn. And I thought it was kind of funny that this uh, mini skein was uh, variegated, but when I made back and forth on the heel. It also striped, so it's an all over stripey look uh, throughout the sock. So these uh, I finished quite uh, quickly after the last episode. And yeah, I have been feeling, like I said in my previous episode, if you have watched, um, that I've been feeling a bit weird. I've been, um, wanting to cast on all the small things. And that's what you see today because I've been doing a lot of small things. And actually this week I have started um, to do some, or last week actually, I have uh, found my knitting mojo with my sweaters as well. So my second and third finished object uh, 
follows that theme of small knits. And these are not fancy, they are just dishcloths. There's a little lace. Detail on the bottom. In both of them, they are a bit different. And these dishcloths are knit in um it's a cotton and bamboo blend. I have no idea. I didn't have I didn't have the ball bands um because these are very old. They've been laying on my stash for a while. So I've been using these for I don't know, some uh crochet projects years ago. And these actually make very nice dishcloths because of the bamboo. Um I find that if you make a cotton dishcloth and it's very hard to to twist it uh like i don't know the exact exact word but when you twist the water out um it doesn't really it it's still quite wet but with the bamboo uh this is actually the best material in my opinion for for these cloths i have a couple um i do have the cotton ones as well but i do prefer uh, the bamboo ones um two weeks ago i had this idea that i wanted to <laughs> i wanted to create like a lace um chart or a lace pattern uh that resembles bunny ears but i um i don't know they didn't turn out the way i wanted i made at first i made this um this red one and You have to have very, <laughs> very good imagination if you find uh, bunny ears from this pattern. So um, I changed it, now I dropped it. And this is a bit better representation of bunny ears. But still, they are too pointy, they are too short. And then I was like, Am I crazy? I'm wasting my time on <laughs> creating a dishcloth and <laughs> for what? So um, I decided to, to leave it there and I will claim this um, for <laughs> wiping my tables. And I really do like the material, the size is fine. Um, I think I'm gonna do the rest of the 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 leftovers that I have from these yarns. I do have a black as well. I will do just like <clears throat> regular from corner, uh, from corner to corner, garter, um, dishcloths, maybe some stripes, and I will uh, use up all the things that I have. So those were um, finished objects number two and three. So then for a second, it, it looked like uh, spring is coming to Finland. Uh, we had a week of of um, five to eight degrees uh, Celsius, and the snow was starting to melt. The roads uh, melted, and the asphalt appeared, and it felt like spring for a minute. And I thought I wanted. Um, or I, I thought I needed uh, a spring accessories, so I did make myself the school run mittens, and these are fingerless mittens by Penrose Knits by Laura Penrose, and um, this is how they look on. <laughs> it's very difficult to show. Um, they are made uh, with one strand of fingering and then you double the strand. I didn't have enough of this variegated to make mittens and headband and I really wanted the headband as well. So I used another leftover. This is actually a leftover from, from my uh, t-shirt that I showed in uh, the last couple of episodes. And <clears throat> I think they are very fun. Uh, one thing that I forgot, <laughs> uh, 
as you can see, it's a bit brighter here on the cuff. And that's where I hold one strand. And when I um, made the mitten, and then I was supposed to omit uh, the second strand on the on the top as well. I forgot. So who cares? Um, it still looks fine. Um, <clears throat> I didn't do the folded thumb because I'm lazy. I just made like a um, a row of pearls and then I cast it off. But yeah, they are very fun. They are actually now that I'm um, wearing them they are a bit slightly too big for me and that's because i did the size medium i should have gone the size small but i didn't dare because my <clears throat> my tension is usually very tight so even though my hands are small i didn't want to risk them being too small and if they are too big for me my husband is brave enough he can wear colors so he, he can take this. Um, if nothing else, he can run um, in them. Uh, I must say, um, although I did forget to leave the other strand off, I did leave the, the other strand off on the inside. So I did the fold with just using one. And if you have uh, paid close attention, you may, may know that um, this color, this um, very bright, colorful yarn is from my shawl, uh, no, slip stravaganza shawl that I showed in the last episode that my friend made. Uh, she sent back all the leftovers that, that was um, left. And because I did have two, um, two skeins of, of this variegated colorful yarn i had enough to make mittens and a headband as well so i wanted to have like a matching set now that we are on the subject i can show even though this is not a finished object yet um i will show now the headband as well so this is what it looks like when it's not held with the yellow um, yarn. This is now held together. I had 50 grams and I know that 50 grams is pretty much what I need for a headband. Uh, so, <clears throat> so I'm holding it double and yeah it was fun in the beginning and then it got boring and that's why it's here. I started it a week ago and <laughs> it shouldn't be that hard but apparently it is. So um I don't know. I'll get to it when I get to it. Um, and for that matter, the temperatures have dropped again. Today it was minus 18 for crying out loud. Minus 18 degrees Celsius. And that's cold. That's very cold. But um, <laughs> we'll get through it. We actually got some snow last week and this week. so. The spring was just a little teaser and the winter came back and I don't know when the actual spring will come. Um, the headband is made out, made without a pattern. Uh, this is something that I've done before. I think I have 50 stitches and I'm using four millimeter needles and I'm just going in the round and I will do the fold. Um, after it's done. I did so um, because it was so much, it, it was curling so much, so I did just like loosely sew the ends together so it's easier to make the fold in the end. But yeah, that's that. Then my last finished object, and this was already in the cover. This is completely inspired by the knit along that Professor Pearl uh, Nicole is hosting and that is a scrappy sweater along and here it is yeah so this is obviously not for me um 
I can't fit into this. It's a 10 to, uh, no, 8 to 10 uh, gears. Uh, the size is 8 to 10. Wow. The size is 8 to 10 gears. And it's, the stitch count is from uh, the Flax Light sweater from Tink, by Tink Can Knits. And um, that's actually where it ends. Um, I have done the, the Flax Light before in size one to one to two and what i noticed was that the neck pad was kind of loose and so i did go down <clears throat> uh, on the stitch count for the neck band and i didn't follow the instructions exactly because i did the short rows in the neck band as you can see it's wider on the on the back and narrower on the front so i did my short rows in the ribbing that way i didn't have to do them uh, on the stripey bits and then um also i did take uh two stitches out from the front and back because um uh, my husband's daughter uh, my stepdaughter is uh very um narrow and uh I didn't want the raglans to go go on the shoulder, <clears throat> go on the shoulders, so I did take four stitches out from the whole width, uh, no, the circumference of of the sweater, and it turned out fine. Um, this is actually this is using only scraps and mini skeins, and for me it was such a fun knit. I I actually did this in four days um there's two reasons first uh my stepdaughter is only here every second weekend and she's here for uh from thursday to sunday so i really wanted her to be here when i'm making this so that i can do some fit checks and all that and the second thing was that i just thoroughly enjoyed the process of making this and i was like just one more stripe, just one more stripe. And I was completely hooked. I was completely hooked. Um, so I did the whole sweater in four days. I started on um, on Thursday and Friday I was um, I was here on the, the mauve uh, stripe. You can see here, uh, that was Friday noon, I think. And then I went and did the sleeves no no i did two stripes before i went back and did the sleeves so i did split for the sleeves and then um uh, did a couple of stripes before i started the sleeves but i really wanted to start on the sleeves so that i can try it on sleeves are a bit more important than you know the body is just straight so i didn't do the decreases as explained in the pattern because um, I just wanted to make them um, according to the stripes. So I did decrease at the end of each stripe. So it's decreasing nicely. And Melinda is really um, hot always. And I didn't want to make her something very long sleeved because I thought that she might not want to wear it if it's like that. So I made it three quarter sleeves and then um, I had to make the body a bit longer because she is she's kind of tall and and thin <laughs> so um, I did do like an extra stripe to be sure and that's because this is not a full length sleeve I thought that it's it gives her much more room to grow if if there is enough length so she can um, grow into it even even if it's not going to be uh, worn that much so yeah um <clears throat> for me also this was what, such a fun knit because there are so many yarny memories in this um there is some yarn that my friend holly sent me from uh, canada so the this first one and the third stripes are from Holly. Um, 
The orangey one is something that I have dyed myself. There are leftovers from my um, Sholography, so this one and the brown. And this is leftovers from this stripy socks that I just showed you, and I managed to use all of it. And then there are my advent um, advent stripes here, one, two, three, four, five of them. And this this um, peachy variegated yarn. This is something that my friend Anna sent me last year. So lots of memories, lots of people, and um, yeah. I actually did pick out. <clears throat> I actually did pick out uh, already a green and blue um, scraps for another one. I'm going to make my youngest sun uh, a sweater like this as well it's very light and nice and i don't know it was such a fun knit but i'm not going to start it straight away um <clears throat> but the scrappy sweater alone i think it runs until september so i'm thinking of making another one of those and now i remember uh i have not told you what i'm wearing <laughs> i will stand up a little it uh, just quickly. Um, <laughs> this is not something that I have made. I'll put a picture here. You can see the whole thing. Um, I bought this off from a Instagram friend called um, <clears throat> Malvina Puikalta. And she was doing like a little um, sale for secondhand knits. And even though you saw it's kind of a big on me this is the size extra large so it gives me about 30 centimeters of positive ease um the sweaters first of all the sweater the pattern is suolaulu by ihtirekonits jenna ko and maybe you already knew that and <clears throat> i just fell in love with the color and I absolutely adore this loose, boxy fit. It's the most comfortable, comfortable thing. Um, I got it a few weeks ago and I've been living in it. Um, it's just so amazing. There's a little bit color work on the sleeves as well. And this is made out of tuku wool fingering. And it's such a lovely, dreamy, dreamy yarn. And I just fell in love with it instantly that I saw, saw it, so I really wanted to have it, and I've been wearing it a ton. So, a second life for uh, a fabulous sweater. And even though I don't know, I'm short and and I'm not very uh, slim, so I don't know if it's the most flattering fit, but it's absolutely dreamy to wear, and I'm loving it. So, I don't care. <laughs> okay, so now that we have gone through all of the finished objects, I think it's time to move on to whips. And I don't know where to start. Um, <laughs> I have a lot. Um, maybe this would be a good time to uh, announce the winners for <clears throat> for the stick along. So. I have bad news. I have not finished my steaked cardigan, and I did show this a couple of episodes ago. Um, this is not even on the needles anymore. I should rip it back. Maybe I'll just do it here. Um, the color work part was too tight. The decreases were too rapid because. I nearly ran out of yarn and yeah I have to rip back I did rip back first of the sleeves I do have to rip back the second sleeve as well so it went into the naughty corner and I haven't touched it since so it was a great start it was a great project it was flying on my needles and then I realized that it's not going to be good so I frocked it or not frock the whole thing, but I had to frock the sleeves and I lost interest. 
I lost interest completely. So sorry to say I didn't even manage to finish my own uh, stick cardigan for my needle along, but that's just life. I will finish it at some point. We are heading towards spring and I don't think I have I have anywhere for that sort of thick and woolly cardigan so I will I will finish it when I will finish it. But on a good note, on a higher note, <laughs> there has been a lot of lovely pictures and uh some finished objects as well and I will now put all the Instagram names on the screen. I have contacted you already. So all of you who won, you already know because this was an Instagram uh, knit along. So I have contacted the winners and there was four pattern prizes and one main prize with some yarn and a project bag. So that's that. My stick along, not very successful. Um, on the other hand, my stripey uh, sock knit along Raita Sukkaralli, that is going strong. There is more than a hundred uh, entries already. There's a lot of uh, lovely inspirational sock pictures if you want to look the hashtag Raita Sukkaralli. And yeah, so at least I have finished <laughs> two pairs of socks for my uh, stripy sock knit along and um, yeah I will do some more and the Raita Sukkaralli is going until uh, the end of April so today is the 1st of April and uh, we still have a whole month to knit some stripy socks all right the next thing um well uh, I'll just I'll just go uh the way the in that order that I've placed them into the pile um I showed in the last episode my own design uh this yoke sweater and now it has a name so this is called Amidala sweater and um yeah, I asked, we have a knit group and I asked, um, <laughs> I asked some opinions. I also did, uh, post it on, uh, Instagram and I was asking your advice on the names. Um, yeah, apparently it's, it, uh, it brings out Star Wars vibes <laughs> or these kind of galaxy vibes. So that's why. Uh, the name. Uh, I really like the sound of Amidala, so that's what it's going to be called. I'm not in a in any rush with this one because it's very thick uh, finished wool. It's uh, the yarn is Yalovilla Uhi um, that I've actually I've received the yarn for this design, so I have not paid for it. So thank you Yalovilla um, for supporting my work, and yeah. It's absolutely gorgeous yarn. It's very, it kind of feels uh, a bit crazy, like it has lanolin in it. Uh, the brown one is the natural color of the sheep, and then um, the mustard color is dyed uh, on a lighter base. So yeah, I did finish two skeins of the main color, and I have another three which I don't think it's going to be enough. So I'm just gonna go and um, knit another skein for the body and then I will do the sleeves. And if I run out, I have to um, order some more yarn. But uh, it's actually, I'm really enjoying this project and the, the color work turned out, finally it turned out the way that I wanted. So. Yeah, I think this is uh, towards the fall and end of the year uh, sort of a project. Uh, on that note, on the su subject of sweaters, um, if you saw my video uh, of all of my whips, 
which was the video from last year, the last episode, I showed you this sweater that I I was working on last summer. <coughs> and this is made out of um, this merino pearl yarn. Um, the last time you have seen it, I was here. So I've done actually quite a chunk of the body already. Um, I did take it out last weekend and that's because I really want to wear it. <laughs> this is a light and airy uh, sweater. There's no pattern. This is just completely just out of my head. Um, it, the raglans don't work the way that I would like them to. There's some short, short rows. Um, I feel like the neckline is a bit square. But I think that's uh, what Raglan usually gives you. Um, but I think it's going to be fine. I think I must try it on. Um, I do suspect that I'm very close of uh, doing the hem uh, ribbing. Sorry, I'm holding it all wonky. Um, yeah, so what I will do next after I have... <laughs> After I have filmed, I will try this on and probably I can start the ribbing. I'm planning on making like straight sleeves with like a, a balloon effect. So I'm not going to increase for the balloon, but I'm just going to do like a straight sleeve and then cinch it in and make some ribbing for the cuff. And that will create that balloony effect that I happen to love a lot. So yeah. That's what I'm planning on doing. Um, it's been sitting <laughs> nearly, uh, it's been sitting on the project back nearly a year. So I think it's time to finally make it happen. The colorway is called Living Like Robin Hood and it's from Woolmy Ones Fibers. And I am alternating skeins. I think that was originally the thing why I stopped knitting on it because I was <laughs> lazy. <laughs> And I didn't feel like alternating, but I knew I know from previous experience that it's very good to alternate, especially on the on the body. I am doing the um, in invisible um, invisible alternating the skeins, and this technique I learned from Professor Poe, and uh, she has a video e on YouTube and also on Instagram how to do it. <clears throat> Um, it creates this very nice invisible seam. So you don't have to do twist. I will show you the wrong side. It's a bit tighter gauge just where I have alternated, but it doesn't create that. You don't need to wrap the yarns around. So it's nearly invisible, uh, at least what I think. I don't think that I will alternate for the sleeves. I still have a whole skein, um, untouched skein, and then I have these two. So probably I will do the ribbing also from one of these balls, and then I will um, not alternate for the sleeves because I'm planning on doing them two at a time, magic loop. But um, if everything goes according to the plan, this will be finished by the time uh, my next episode. We'll see. And another one of those projects that, that I have not touched in a long, 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 long time. I have dug out um, a pair of socks. These are at least two years old. I have shown them in my confessions video and uh, I made a promise in that video that I will finish the pair uh, for these socks this year and here they are. These are my Tool and Varit socks. It's my first ever pattern that I have 
published uh, its free pattern, but unfortunately only in Finnish. And now I have done um, this much for the second for the second sock. Um, the reason why I did um, the why I <laughs> the reason why I did start these socks was that I wanted to try out the ladder back uh, chalk art technique, and that's what I've done here. I have no idea how much you can see. Uh, the yarn that I've done the the chalk art with is um, the, the ladder back chalk art is black. So anyway, I wanted to because this one is made with the regular way wrapping the yarn, and it does not have pretty much like any stretch. So I wanted to try if this technique will allow this fabric to stretch more and it does it's fabulous so yeah i'm hoping uh someday finishing these <laughs> socks but now i actually have started so um i don't know maybe that will happen one day one of these days uh what i wanted to say about the pattern uh, it's free on ravelry and um even though it is finished uh, i'll show you here's the chart it's free and it's mine so i can show it <laughs> um so it shows the increases uh on the chart so even if you don't um even if you don't speak finnish uh i think you can still make this pattern maybe the ribbing is difficult to understand um, even with like google translation but um if you have um if you are interested you can definitely make it using this chart also and that's that one more no two more whips um three more whips <laughs> i have a lot um so i really wanted something mindless and even though the green sweater is mindless it still requires this alternating the skeins and um, i felt like making another section for my vertices unite shawl and i have oh it's wrong way <laughs> So I had this big uh, dark green area made, section one, and now I have done section two, uh, which also alternates to colors. These two colors are, all, are also from my advent, and I think they are fabulous. And I don't know when I will continue making this show. I have all the yarn. Uh, set aside in the back. Uh, the next color will be this rusty color. I will do a section three with this one. And it comes in between these two. And then who knows? Who knows uh, what will happen? But I, I have placed now the stitches on hold uh, onto one of my uh, the knitting barber cords and that's a good thing uh, to put it on a, a tube like this it doesn't like when you do put a waste yarn into your project um, if it stays there for a long time the stitches will stretch a little bit or they will actually like try they will try to escape so the stitches become very very small and it's kind of hard to put them back onto your needles but when you're using the tube uh, and you can feed the tube into the needle and slide it through the project, um, it's much easier to um, take back your stitches. <laughs> I have no, I don't know. Anyway, you get the point. It's easier and I will leave it here and come back to that if the inspiration strikes. Um, 
I have now decided that I will just follow my inspiration and follow follow the joy of knitting and make whatever I feel like making. So, yeah. And then my payu blower, uh, it's actually now on the floor, so I have to scoop it from there. Um, I have not made uh, so much progress that I kind of wanted to, but then again, I've been feeling like doing something else. So that's what I've been doing. It's here. It's also off the needles because I really wanted to try. I was kind of wondering whether it's going to be a bit too wide. And it sort of is kind of wide. Um, it is now, uh, I think it's, I think it's eight to 10 centimeters of positive ease, so three, three and a half inches. And because I'm much larger on the bust than on the waist, it's kind of 30 centimeters extra on the waist, but I don't actually mind. Um, I have done so many, so many sweaters that are too tight for me. Um, I don't feel comfortable wearing them because they are like too form fitting and because I'm not the smallest person and because of all the sick leaves uh, that I've done uh, or that I've been on the last eight months, um, I've gained some weight and I don't feel comfortable in form fitting clothes. So I thought I'm better off with a more loose fitting t-shirt and also because it is a t-shirt I don't need to I don't need it to be like um figure hugging uh, so that it's nicer to wear when it's warmer um yeah so I have no idea when the pattern will be in testing I'm hoping in the next month or so um we'll see We'll see where the life takes us. I have pretty much finished the pattern writing. Um, I will have a tech editor uh, look at it uh, in a week. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. But if you are interested in testing this, uh, there is a link to a form where you can where you can um, add your email to my list. So when I do have the test call open, you will get informed uh, via email. And to be clear, that's not applying for this test knit. It's just um, an email list, a mailing list for, uh, in general, all of my test knits. And you will get uh, informed when uh, an application is open. I think that was very unclear um, explanation, but forgive me. One last whip. Uh, yesterday, this is parsley acquisitions as well. Yesterday I received the parcel. Um, I did the test knit for this Helia tea for uh, Karamayan's Dina, and she is definitely by far my favorite uh, yarn dyer. And because I participated on the test knit, she gave me or us uh, a discount code for her shop. And because I'm a sucker for a yarn, <laughs> of course I took the, took the chance and um, I placed a little order. I did order two skeins of her newer sock bases, so BFL sock, and then a silky sock base with which is BFL silk and nylon. And I have already caked up the first one. I'll put a picture here for reference what it looked like on a skein. And this is the second one. So pretty with all these oranges and a little bit of speckling. And this is the silky sock base. And yeah, 
So, um, immediately when I got this package, my husband actually brought it for me when he came from home from work. And I did wind it up pretty much immediately because I have been playing and uh, I have had this idea in my head. I have scribbled these um, triangles on my iPad and here is what I have done. This will be just like a vanilla sock, uh, otherwise, except that I did this little color work uh, on the top. I have used all kinds of scraps, oh, these little nuggets and the leftovers from the, the sweater. And yes, a basic patterning. Uh, I think it's just absolutely lovely. And the reason why I'm I'm doing these kind of uh, just colorway on the on the ankle portion because I really do like to wear them. Last weekend we did like a little hike on the woods with the kids, and because the snow has melted a bit, a lot, uh, but there is still a lot of snow. Um, you're kind of your shoe sank into the snow multiple times during that that um, hike or walk and I have one pair of socks that has this thicker um, color work I'm actually wearing them now uh, they are my Christmas socks so I wanted to do similar sock with using some color work I'm not sure whether this is going to be a pattern maybe it will tell me if you want it tell me if you want it to be a pattern um, so yeah just basic triangles and just playing with a little bit of, of color. And I think it looks fabulous. I have just started uh, the heel flap. Um, at the moment, they are just tight, tiny bit too tight. Uh, I can't get them on. I'm hoping uh, they will plug out. Um, usually I do add some stitches for the color work. This time I did go from uh, 2.25 millimeter needle from two from 2.25 millimeter to 2.75 so from us size one to us size two for the color work and i don't think that was enough um so i don't know i'm hoping i don't have to rip back because there's there are a million ends to weave in so <laughs> i'm hoping the blocking will do the magic and i will um managed to get them on but yeah I'm a very tight color work knitter and that's why I'm always in trouble with with my color work tension but yes um that was parsley acquisition and also a new whip we have reached the end we have reached the end of of, of all of the things that I have been making um thank you so much for <laughs> Getting this far, uh, I'm actually having uh, a one year anniversary, podcast anniversary soon. Uh, I have released my first ever episode on the 21st of April, so it will be in three weeks. Um, I'm thinking I might do uh, an anniversary video, so maybe I'll postpone filming until until it's time and I just want to reflect a little bit on my journey here I'm very grateful uh, for all of you who have subscribed to my channel there is nearly 1500 of you and that's kind of mind-blowing I never thought I never thought I would get so many viewers and um, I'm really very happy about it um, Maybe I will do like a little uh, recap of uh, my knitting journey. So on the next episode, I will tell you a little bit more how I became a knitter. Um, I do explain that on my first episode. But when I was watching my first episode yesterday, I did a little uh, clip here and there. I noticed one thing. Um, 
I, I'm not smiling. I'm not smiling at all. Maybe I was nervous. I don't know. But I've grown to love this podcasting so much. And that's mainly because the response that I've <laughs> that I've, I've uh, gotten from you it's so lovely to talk to you to to reply to your comments and this has given me so much joy and so much inspiration to do this podcasts and also the community is amazing and therefore I am very happy to continue forward with my videos so thank you for being here. <laughs> it means a lot. If you have not subscribed yet, please do so if you wish. And uh, yeah, I'm truly happy that I have started this journey. I do have some acquisitions and that's what I'm going to talk to you uh, next. I have already been talking for quite a while, but um, this probably is not no news <laughs> to you. Um, I did order some woolly knits. Uh, you all probably know why. There was this con along going with Greya Bear podcast and Rebecca has inspired all of us <laughs> to buy some woolly knits and I couldn't help myself. I had to. So I do have some green and some mustardy yellow uh brownish this is the harvest colorway harvest yellow and this is the the british wool cones uh four ply and or actually it's a two ply but it's the fingering weight and this is loaded green the other one gorgeous gorgeous green so yeah I have two sweater quantities of these. I have so many plants, but I do also have a lot of other yarn that I should go through. And I even surprised myself, but I did a little swatchy swatch. Um, this is <laughs> this is neither of those uh, yarns. This is um, Wool Me Once Fibers um, Safari Wool. It's 100% wool and it has this variegation of, of red. <laughs> it, it has this um, black, black thread going through uh, at some parts. And the colorway is called Ocus Pocus. And it's very much my, my color scheme. <laughs> If you if you've been here before, you know that I I have a soft spot for these yellows and mustards. Um, I was watching for for the wow I'm blanking out Chief Neeland pattern. I have no idea what what it's called. I will put the name here. Um. I didn't get gauge with the suggested needles. I think I have to go down for um, 1.5 millimeters. So this is made with five millimeters uh, as suggested, but um, I think I'll go down to 4.5. But now I can't decide. Uh, when I do finish my um, green snow name raglan sweater, uh, I was thinking of casting on another, but I don't know whether I should go for the Celeste by Sari Nordlund or should I start this. Both of them are suitable for the warmer weather. I have the um, wool, well, Woolly Wood by Novita for my Celeste. And then I do have this Safari Wool, which is very light and airy. Um, so that would also work for this season. So I don't know. Maybe you want to vote. I will put the pictures here. Which one should I make first? Leave me a comment. <laughs> one last thing. I did some yarn dyeing. Um, these are not some fancy bases. These are just wool sock bases that I had lying around. And nonetheless, it's 
now been uh, dyed up. Um, and this is what I came out with. I'll show you one of these first. Absolutely love this. I actually do already have a project in mind for this. Um, I am planning on making uh, the Rukki shawl by Jonna Capella. And this is what I'm planning on making it with. And that will be a present. And then this is just, I don't know, 50 grams of sock yarn. I'm actually opening this up. It's sort of a, I know it will create like a stripey effect because it's lighter on the other end and darker on the other end. So, I don't know, socks for someone at some point. It won't make an adult pair of socks uh, unless I use a contrast contrasting heel, uh, cuff and toes. But we'll see. I don't know. Now it won't go back. <laughs> it's a loose gain now, but it's a skein. Anyways, that's what I've been. Whoa, <laughs> that's what I've been doing, and uh, yeah, all kinds of fun, fun crafty things, and yeah. Um, last thing. Uh, is some life portion. I don't know if I have much to say. I have basically said it all already. But um, if you leave me here, thanks for spending your time with me. And if you are not, then let's go into live chat. So as I said in the beginning, I have been a little bit sick uh, this week. Um, it was not COVID. Um, <laughs> I've been just sick the regular way. I have been, I had fever. I have been uh, all clocked up and feeling a bit poorly. And I don't know, um, I'm bouncing back now, but it was, even my husband said that you are never sick. And this time I was the only one who was sick and no one else. <laughs> so one, First, first, first for that as well. So at least I got to stay at home and rest, and it's been good. I for two days I couldn't even knit. I did kind of a couple of st stitches, and then I was like, nope, not working. Um, but that's fine. I have been resting, and I'm feeling fine now. So next week I will work normally, and uh, at least that's the plan um otherwise i told you the weather has turned back into winter which is fun not but uh we'll deal with it and um i'm really hoping hoping for warm weather and uh, the the mid season is not or the shifting of the season is not always so fun because there is so much slush and wet and dirt and and all that fun stuff with the kids but it's part of the spring and i'm hoping hoping for the snow to snow to melt so it's easier to go on the walks with the kids and um browsing the you know woods forests and stuff that's what we like to do as a family so so yeah um designs are going slow um but that's fine i do have a full-time or not actually full-time i'm working 80 percent um, hours so i'm working from monday to thursday and fridays are my knitting days and still the kids have been sick so much that there have been so many fridays that i have have not had the chance to work on my designs but I think everything will go um, on the pace that they need to go, and yeah, I don't think I have any much anything else to say. <laughs> um, I'm really happy that you have been here. I'm really happy that you watch until the end, 
And I think I will end it here. I will see you next time. Bye.